I recently attended the sixth annual Bitcoin Expo at MIT. When I walked in, I noticed there's not a lot of people that look like me. I looked around in here, here, and here. So we're looking around, trying to find a black woman to talk to. Um, there don't appear to be any in here. Uh, I think the entire day we've been here, I've seen two, and it was unclear whether the other one was a reporter like I am. Um, and there's a lot of people here too. So, we yeah, have better luck. We didn't. Let's take a step back. What exactly is blockchain? Well, the dictionary defines it as a digital database containing information that can be simultaneously used and shared within a large decentralized, publicly accessible network. Wait, what? Let's make that more simple. Imagine large webs of building blocks. Instead of answering to a single source, these webs are decentralized networks with a community vibe meaning that me, you, and your neighbor can all help run it. And that creates one of the most attractive components of blockchain, digital safety. Because there's not a single centralized core, it's much harder for a single source to hack, corrupt, or even create major damage to this web of networks. It's kind of like a giant neighborhood watch system. Now imagine the actual blocks like Legos, stacked in a certain order. Each block contains records that are protected through a secret code called cryptography. Ever heard of cryptocurrency like Bitcoin? That digital money uses blockchain technology and has helped open people's eyes to the possibilities of blockchain's impact on other industries. So yeah, it's a small piece of the tech space and it's still fairly new, but it's got a big following. Everyone from big businesses to restaurants and college campuses have jumped on board. So back to MIT, the blockchain conference and me trying to find black women involved with the technology. I still wasn't having any luck. But I also noticed there weren't really any black men either. And of the two I came across, one of them was actually somebody I was looking for. Actually, I'm doing a solo talk. He was the only black speaker at this conference, and his name is Boima Fambola. There are projects that already do naming on the blockchain. So I asked him, what gives? I mean, it's a deeper point, right? Like, I feel like Black women are underappreciated across the spectrum of like life, right? I also asked a similar question to another black attendee. His name is Jarrell James. He's been working in blockchain since 2014, and in the last five years, he hasn't really come across that many black women in the space either. Two, and one of them was a woman uh, who was just like really kind of working towards uh, initiative. She wasn't like in the technical side of things. Two black women at least. But yeah, it, it'll get better. Meet Lindsay Nguyen. She works at MIT and is the founder of her own company called Empirical, which is pretty impressive. She's also the founder of another pretty important group called Women of Color in Blockchain, which she started after attending a conference like the one I went to, where she also saw a lack of black women on hand. I want the blockchain industry to trip over a lot less hurdles than I've seen. Um, you know, the, the traditional sort of tech space trip over. As a black woman and a, a black founder of mm -hmm. blockchain, what's been some of the biggest struggles you face? The balancing act that exists uh, between navigating uh, this space as an only. So you have an extra hurdle to jump over um, when it comes to setting the stage and helping people connect with, with who you are and why you're bringing this idea to the table. Tanya Evans is also a member of Women of Color in Blockchain, and she teaches about the technology at the University of New Hampshire's Law School. From your perspective and your experience in it, why are the numbers still so low? I will say that I don't think that it started out to be uh, intentionally exclusionary. I think if you would talk to the original cypherpunks, they believe this technology to be the ultimate in democracy, that you don't even have to know people. We have pseudonyms in the way that people move in the space where you may not know who they are, where they live. And I think about the origins of how the Bitcoin blockchain came into existence. Traditionally speaking, African Americans generally, and certainly um, black women in particular, didn't really move in those spaces. This has been an issue in the tech space overall, though. 
It's nothing new, and the responses or excuses also aren't very original. We've heard this one before. It's a pipeline problem. Hashtag what pipeline problem? Because I'm surrounded by these amazing women doing things in the space. Do you think there are biases against black people in blockchain? I think there are definite unconscious biases um, that exist, not just with, with black people, but also a backlash almost that I've seen uh, called, um, you know, the anti-DNI movement where conference organizers and people who are in the C-suite within blockchain projects really pushing back because they don't want to feel pressured into hiring black people. There are also certain blinders surrounding these conversations about diversity in tech. And in blockchain, sometimes it gets even more convoluted. I think we trick ourselves into thinking the space is really diverse because the space is people from Japan, China, Taiwan, and white people, and that's considered diversity in America. But I think diversity of shade is just as important as diversity of culture. There's that, oh, we've made it because we've got cognitive diversity, um, because you know this person is, is from a different field, uh, but it, it's all of those things and none of them. One of the biggest factors holding black women back is a lack of allies, but in one critical area. Funding. When it comes to venture capital money, black women receive less than 1%, and the average seed round for a black female founder is $42,000. A pretty paltry number when you consider that nearly $130 billion were raised in VC investment in 2018 alone. One of the things you see a lot, you know, in, in the VC space is, um, you know, VCs tend to syndicate, and VCs also like get deal flow from people who look a lot like them. Most of us will get stuck in bootstrapping, right? And the friends and family round, and we'll call it that, but it really is just friends and family. And so in that way, we just have a different experience in order to get from um, concept to MVP to a full running um, blockchain startup. It can be really disheartening when you see oh, you know, articles that there's so much capital being deployed and there's so much money, it's just, you know, finding the right vehicles for, for your company. We're still gonna work in the space, we're still gonna do what we do, we're gonna be amazing at what we do, but um, finding out where the meeting is when you don't know the meeting is going on isn't gonna be solved by people who aren't at the meeting. Bottom line, all of these black blockchain enthusiasts that I talk to just want their piece of the tech pie, and they wanna see others who look like them included and valued as well. Blockchain on its own is not going to be the great equalizer. We have to be creating policies and hiring practices. And I think it's a tool that black people specifically really need to know how to wield. And I think it's one that in a lot of cases we've been looking for for quite some time.